MTV insists that our viewers do not send in any home footage of themselves or others attempting stunts. We will not open or view any submissions, so don't waste your time. The following stories are real. They contain no recreations or dramatizations. The footage was captured on video by the people involved. Do not attempt these bone-crunching, skin-splitting stunts under any circumstances. They can cause serious injury or leave you permanently scarred. Oh! Tonight on Scarred. Go faster, cut faster. Bodies get twisted. Oh my God. And skin gets ripped. And we're counting it down from bad. Oh no! Are you okay? To worst. Oh. To the most f***ed up clip of the day. So stick around as we bring oh, the pain. Holy f***, dude. Oh, God. Oh. Show me a skater who likes big air, and I'll show you a very happy surgeon. This is number five. I'm Bob Reagan. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. And this is my scar story. I've probably been skating around nine years. When I first started, it was really hard, but the hardest thing was seeing other people that were way better than me. It kind of made you want to quit, but you stick to it. And you get better gradually. The day of the incident started off like a normal day. And we decided to go street skating. First, we went to this college. We were skating good, you know, I was hitting this rail. You gotta go. But we got kicked out. Can we have one more try? So we thought it'd be cool to go to this real spot at this high school. I've never been there, I've never heard of it, and we just went there. Already was hitting one handrail, you know, with another. I was feeling pretty good. First few times. I'm rolling up. They get on the rail, I just slide out. Yeah, Bob. And then, I believe it was the fourth try. The quick smack just hurt. When I hit, I heard it pop. It felt like a burst of pain. It was agony. I was going so fast that I alley too high. My wheel clipped. My foot stuck to the rail and I just went forward. I felt like I was in the air forever. And it literally felt like someone slammed me on the ground. Everyone was just quiet and shocked. My mom picked me up actually. We headed straight to Bayview Hospital. The doctor was like, I got some bad news for you. It's definitely broke. When we did get to the hospital and they confirmed that it was a broken elbow, it was upset, angry, just a lot of things. My forearm bone was pushed up into my elbow. It caused it to fracture. I really wish he would wear his pads. This is from the slam. That's where the skin ripped. Just from sliding like that good two feet. I can't straighten it all the way. When I bend it, my vein or bone or whatever pops out like right here. I've never skated that rail before and I don't think I want to anymore. You ever wonder what that cute girl next door does when she's not being chased by dudes? Well, this next chick gets chased by other girls, and they're all riding big-ass quads. It's number four. What's up? I'm Kara Korn from Alvin, Texas. Shut up! 
And people are gonna think I'm a redneck. <laughs> and this is my scar story. I think that was like the scariest thing ever to happen to me. Because it like no warning, it just happened so quickly. I started racing quads in the spring of 2003. I um, worked all through high school. I ended up buying a quad on my 18th birthday. Last year, I actually ended up winning the championship for the women's class in 2006. Every year, it seems like the girls get faster and faster and more competitive. It was uh, the day after my 21st birthday. I was going to an out-of-town race. We went to the track, and I was getting ready to race. You have a practice moto, and then you have two motos. Well, the first moto, I started going through a little roller section with some single jumps. I was just nervous for some reason. I felt like something was going to happen. First moto, I ended up winning by about 30 seconds. And uh, it looked like a pretty good day for me. The second moto, it took off. I got a really good hole shot, and I had a very good lead. So I was taking it easy. I said I was going to coast to the rest of the moto. And, uh... Oh! All of a sudden, the foiler just locked up, and I was laying on the ground, and a 400-pound object crushed me. But the first time I ever watched it, I, like, almost threw up. There was just no warning, nothing. I was still hanging on the handlebars, and it was almost completely flipped over. I was on the ground, crushed by it, before I even knew what was going on. This is where the crank broke in half, which caused my motor to blow up. As soon as the wreck was done, I thought if I can get back to the four-wheeler, I can maybe still win. And uh, as soon as I pushed myself up, I just went back down because I could feel this numbness and tingling, and I knew that something was broken. When I got to the hospital with a broken wrist, they kept wanting to give me a tetanus shot. Well, I'm deathly afraid of needles, and this guy kept coming in every 10 minutes, I swear. Are you ready for your shot? And I was like, you know, you're evil. <laughs> the scar that I was left with was this, and everybody always asks, what did you do to your wrist? And I just say, oh, I broke it on my 21st birthday, and then they always have to ask, oh, how'd you do that? to tell them that I raced four-wheelers. Skateboarders are always pushing themselves to the edge. But when bones start pushing through your skin, you gotta ease up a bit. This is number three. Hey, this is Josh Perkins. I'm from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And this is my scar story. I broke my ankle. Just got back from a trip to Europe, skateboarding. I was gonna take some time off. My friend came by, said we're going skating. I guess he thought I was taking too much time off. They told me about one rail at this school that some kids have skated. I figured, what the hell? The support came up above the rail, so when you slid across, you'd feel the knobs on it almost. It takes me 15 tries to finally land a trick. I gotta feel it out almost, and work for it. Next try, rolled up to it. I broke my ankle. That was the trick that changed my life. I just remember my back ankle just rolling. I felt like a suction feeling of the joint coming out and something cracked. I broke my ankle. Everyone's just sitting there like, yeah, right. He does this all the time. You gotta go to the hospital, man. There's a hole in my sock from the bone coming out. They're like, oh, man. It just started throbbing. It was burning real bad. I wanted to die. 
The EMTs showed up. They cut my shoe off. It felt so weird and bad. I've never seen this clip. I never wanted to, and now I'm gonna watch it. My heart's pounding so hard. Ah! These two scars are where they had to open me up and put the uh, screws in to hold my bone in place. This inside one is still mushy. It's where the bone popped up out through the skin. It doesn't even look really fully healed. I got a nice $50,000 bill. No insurance. It happens. I kind of lost motivation to go hucking myself down big stuff. Before I had, I didn't even care. I was a carcass hucker. I spend more time with my family now. I've got a job, I can pay bills. I broke my ankle. I'm living the, the country boy, the country boy dream. You are watching Scarred. All I can say about this next clip is that with friends like this, go faster, get faster. You just want to take them and smack the <laughs> out of them. It's number two. I'm Scott Masters. I'm from Bay City, Michigan. This is my scar story. And I got it on video. <laughs> <laughs> What Brian used to do was just usually cross country trail riding, flat terrain. He was more of a slow paced rider, didn't do a lot of jumps, didn't do a lot of uh, things that could be potentially super dangerous. Alright, here's the deal. Scott's gonna go down here and try to jump that gap in the railing. I actually had my eyes on the uh, little gap he was gonna do for a while. The plan was that he was gonna do it first, and then if he made it, uh, I was gonna do it. Luckily, he didn't make it. Because <laughs> I probably wouldn't have either. This is where it all happened. And this skinny little water here. I was mostly worried about the brooch and how uh, wide it was. So here's about eight inches wide. It's pretty skinny for when you first start out riding. And if I get enough speed to actually try and clear it. Go faster, it's got faster! <laughs> well, he was riding up to it and uh, I noticed he was going way too slow. Go faster, it's got faster! So I'm yelling, go faster, Scott, go faster! Yeah, I heard that and that's probably what made me mess up. Go faster, it's got faster! I didn't realize I had enough speed, so I just tried bunny hopping. I couldn't bunny hop work crap. Requires a little more skill, which I didn't have. Oh! It was really stupid for me to even think about trying to do that. First thing I heard was a railing. My back started hitting it. My face just smacked in the ground. Oh! I hear my nose snap. Oh! I heard the bike smash into the ground. That little break in the wall right there would be from the impact of my wheel hitting it. I dropped the camera a little bit to run over to him, and then I watched him, and he just flopped over completely limp. Holy f dude. The more Jay wanted to do that. Ow, in my head. I saw he was okay. Lay down, you're cool. Lay down. So I kept recording, you know, watched all the blood pour out of his face. I had bleeding. Uh, your whole face was bleeding, man. As soon as I got to the hospital, they put me full of morphine. That's when I kind of passed out for a while. I took x-rays in my head, my spine, my shoulders, and my ribs. Then I woke up. The whole entire left side of my face was just completely scabbed over. I had a hole in my lip. My nose split right in half. My nasal passage got blocked off. I had no skin left on my chin. I had a huge indent in my forehead. I was missing the top part of my hair right there, a little widow's peak. That was gone. Remembering how much pain it caused me, and how much blood I lost. I'll never do that again. Everyone's like, did you get in a fight? Did you get dragged by a car on the road or something? I'm like, no, I crashed my bike. And they're like, how'd you do that? Oh, well, hit a railing. I slid on my face. They're like, how'd you do that? I'm like, well, I listened to my friend. Go faster, it's got faster! <laughs> oh! Welcome back to Scarred. It's time now for our number one pick. But just to refresh your memory, here's what you've seen so far. Number five. Number four. Number three. Number two. Oh!
<laughs> Your whole face is bleeding, man. So here it is, a totally gruesome, oh. most f***ed up clip of the day. Hey, my name's Phil Jones from Gaston, North Carolina. Oh! And I got the most f***ed up clip of the day. Man, I, I tell you what. I travel a lot with, you know, like a lot of my friends. We got this big group called uh, the Team Pimpsky. We were going down to Florida, Tennessee, Atlanta, uh, New York. It's just like a, a really fun time. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, it is. I'm into it. Yeah. For Halloween weekend, we decided to go down to Orlando, Florida. Yeah, we were going down there for uh, the Beko Gym at Mesh Skate Park. It's just like a, it's a program contest they have down there. No, the day of the contest, we show up at the park. Drop in. Got all stoked, you know, I had all my friends, you know, yelling, you know, filthy, stuff like that, you know, so I just, just had me pump, you know. As soon as I hit the ground, I didn't, I, I don't remember nothing. Top of the seven foot wall, you know, I mean, like everything's cool, you know. And then I'm not sure if my front tire hit like a slick spot on the ramp. And as I was coming down, uh, my front tire just washed out. It just went bam. Felt like I was going 100 miles an hour just straight to my face. I've been in several wrecks, you know, but nothing, nothing this serious, you know. I mean, like, this was, I mean, this was out of hand. I had five or six guys trying to hold me down. I was trying to get up after I fell, you know. Like, as soon as I hit, you know, I'll try to get back up, try to find my bike. Uh, that was the most scariest part. It's sort of like I looked like a, like a zombie walking around. I had blood pouring out of my ears, out of my nose. I, I was really scared. I was really scared. Well, they loaded me up in a helicopter. And, like a few of the medics were trying to put a mask on me so I can breathe. I had a severe head trauma, several fractures to the skull. I broke my jaw. I came within this close, within this close to dawn. Got a small scar from the surgery where they put the plates in. I got three plates, nine screws in my jaw. All these teeth down here, I fell out. The hearing in my left ear is completely gone. And I had to get a hearing aid for my right ear. And I've only got about like 70 or 80% in that ear. But my face is pretty much back to normal. So like whenever people see me, you know, like they won't ever think I was in like a, a wreck like that. Oh! And that was the most <laughs> up clip of the day. Next time on Scars. You see the blood on the ground. Every part of your face is just throbbing. Oh, I had an intense headache for about 10 days after that. I felt like I got shot in the stomach with a shotgun. Somebody call 911. I knew I was dying for sure. Ah!